Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog and surprise, I read Venom number 26. <laughs> uh, actually, the reason I did this is because uh, I had someone on my Parasite podcast, I think it was uh, Ryan Softy, uh, S-A-W-T-Y. I had him on the Parasite podcast and he was talking about, you know, um, you know, like, you know, how we should support, you know, books of characters we love. And I, you know, me, I go back and forth. I'm like, eh, I don't know if I want to buy stuff. I don't know if I want to review stuff, you know, as far as like the, the Venom book. I think I've quit three or four times now. So clearly I'm not very good at walking away. So there's something Donnie's doing right to give him some credit. Um, and I know I'm very critical of the guy. But in this episode, I feel like I'm going to say a lot of positive things about him because... I really liked this issue. I noticed that, like, I like Ryan Stegman's artwork, definitely, and I think he's a phenomenal artist. But I noticed when Ibon Coelho jumps on the book, I noticed that uh, I ease into some of the silliness a little bit more. Like, Ibon looks like he's having so much fun. Now, Ryan's having fun, too, but it's very dark, and it's, you know, the, the art is very dark, and it, you know, kind of mirrors the story, and it, it makes some lines, maybe, that were supposed to be read a little with some levity in it, makes me you know, read them very dark and serious, and it makes me feel everything is serious, and you know, in his book. And I know sometimes there are lines where I'm like, oh, that's obviously like a joke or levity and stuff. But I think with his tone and his style, it's great for the big epic stuff. But some of that interpersonal stuff and those character moments, I think it's fun to have a Bond do those, uh, to be honest with you. And that's not, again, that's not a slam to Ryan Stegman. I think he does great on the action and the, the you know, the overall look of the book. But a Bond brings this level of fun to it, you know. And I also like, you know, whenever a Bond's drawing Eddie and Dylan talking to each other, he has them have very expressive faces, and I really like that. And sometimes they're they're laughing or they're smiling. Or in this one, there's a scene where uh, Dylan is he says he's afraid of heights, and then you know, which is like, hey, you're a demigod, you know, with all these abilities, but he's still a kid too. So I I remember commenting that on Instagram or Twitter. I was like, why is he looking scared? And then there's some context now. It looks like he has a fear of uh, heights and stuff. And it's like, all right, even though he has powers, he's still a kid, and he he might still have those fears. So that scene where he's hanging on the back of Venom and Venom swinging. And he's like screaming and stuff. Now, it, you know, has more context to it. And I was like, all right, cool. And this is a pretty neat father and son story. And that's the stuff I like Donny Cates writing. This feels more street level, but there is elements uh, that are big and epic too. I think this is one of those issues where Donnie finds a good balance of both, in my opinion. And uh, and so that's why, you know, I was like, I want to give this a shot because after talking to Ryan, talking to Softy, he said, you know, we should support people we love. And I go, well, even though I'm not, you know, loving what Donnie's doing, um, I, I do like Ibon stuff a lot. And uh, you know me, all the way back to like Venomized and stuff. Like, I like his style. He's He's got a great style. And so when I saw that he was drawing this, I was like, all right, I'll, I'll read the first one and I'll buy the first one and then I'll wait to review the other ones until the trade comes out unless something massive happens like the reveal of virus obviously when that gets revealed so that's what we'll talk about a little bit today I, i'm not going to do a full review of this i will say though overall i liked this book i'm not going to do a, a deep breakdown of every little thing in it because i don't want to spoil you know some of the stuff that happens in it but i will sp i'll do some minor spoilers so if you haven't read it yet i'd say go away now and come back after you've read it just in case i, I touch on a little too much um but you know, this is, like I said, it's a father-son focused story. Now that we've had this big cosmic thing, now that they know Nola's coming, now that, you know, he's uh, Eddie's separated from the Carnage symbiote and he just has his regular symbiote back, he's missing his hand still, so they still show that, that the symbiote provides him a hand when they're bonded. Uh, but there's some fun moments at the beginning of this book where Eddie and the suit are not bonded. Uh, you know, at first, uh, Eddie, you know, it makes a makes a joke about why they're not bonded. He's kind of like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm got tired of running, basically. Uh, so the suit, you know, lured a bad guy and brought it to Eddie and then they bonded and then took down the bad guy. And uh, what's cool is like, you know, that ties back into, you know, Dylan. And then he goes and talks to Dylan. He says, hey, let's get some answers about your powers. Um, that's what I want to do. And I was like, hey, this is great. So this is the stuff I was wanting. I was like, all right, let's explore what Dylan is. Let's find out where his powers come from, what exactly is. This is that build up, right? So that's why, you know, and I, that's why I was hanging on. I'm like, yeah, Dylan and Noel don't feel like characters to me. At, you know, when I when I was doing those previous episodes, they didn't feel like characters to me. This is where we get to see them be characters, I hope. Uh, so this is, you know, this Venom Beyond a lot weighs on Donnie now to, you know, uh, at least sell me. I know a lot of you guys already love Dylan, and I like Dylan too. I like the concept of Dylan uh, as a son of Eddie's, but this, you know, him being a plot device thing, I kind of rail against, obviously. Uh, but this seemed like one of those where they touch on the humanity of Dylan, but also the, uh, you know, the, the symbiote demigod version of, of Dylan as well. And he doesn't do a lot in this issue because his power still 
drain him. You know, we saw in Absolute Carnage when he uses them, he still gets kind of drained and fatigued from them. So he's not using his powers in this one. This is mainly an Eddie issue. And what we find is, uh, you know, Eddie goes back to the maker and he's like, hey, I want you to study Dylan. And he's like, wait, what are you doing? And the maker's standing in front of a giant portal, like a Stargate. And he's like, I'm going to, you know, he's like, hey, you're interrupting. I have other plans. I don't care about you now or your son. I got my samples and I'm ready to go. And I think everything's lined up to where I can finally go home. And, you know, Eddie's like, what do you mean home? He's like, where are you going? And he's like, uh, you know, don't don't bother me, fly. You know, he's like, get away. You're just like a gnat to me now. I don't need you anymore. He's like, uh, so Eddie's like, no, you're going to listen to me. So when he walks up to the maker, the maker reveals that he's not alone. Uh, the maker is uh, bonded to the ultimate comics symbiote. And he mentions this in my universe, this symbiote is a weapon. It's something that was artificially made by man, uh, you know, but it was not, it's not from space. So acts a little differently so you actually see the maker use that symbiote in ways that are very weapon like and i was like hey that's pretty cool actually you know i like actually i like the maker being included back when they did project oversight those like two issues before the abyss storyline where Iban came in and drew it um i really like those issues i was like hey i like that the maker is going to be part of this story with uh with eddie brock and stuff and he's going to tie into the ultimate universe a little bit that was kind of neat to me you know and he's also still you know uh, responding to or answering to the council of reeds because obviously the maker is a alternate universe reed richards from the fantastic four uh, but he's like a younger version he operated on himself and made his head enlarged so he has to wear this like crazy looking helmet like cerebro times four on his head um and so eddie you know them two they confront each other and they're fighting and then that's when virus shows up and the weird thing is is the way a virus is introduced the symbiote knows who virus is or at least it seems that way he says eddie i i, I sense something wrong and he goes what do you mean he goes there's someone here and then he they turn and he goes it's virus and you see virus you know uh, uh, from the same caption bubbles that the, sim the symbiote said so sim the symbiote seems to know who virus is, uh, you know, but not like, I don't know, maybe he knows who's under the virus suit, but how does he know this person goes by the name virus? Um, so what I did is I went back and read the abyss and the project oversight issues. I wanted to go back and just uh, re refresh myself on what exactly Donnie said when it came to Eddie getting his memories wiped. Um, you know, the accident with the kid getting hit by the car that Eddie, you know, hit a kid and killed a kid and his dad, you know, convinced him that he was innocent, but Eddie knew he was, you know, drunk driving and he was guilty. And so ever since then, his moral compass has been really fractured. And that's why he wants to protect innocent people, not just from others but from himself uh, to an extent and so uh, i was rereading those issues and i was like and we're learning about you know eddie's relationship with his dad that he might not actually have a sister that he maybe didn't actually have cancer that the symbiote uh, changed his biology to make it appear that he had cancer or that he maybe temporarily had cancer i don't know i didn't know the symbiote could do all that stuff uh, but then also they do allude that maybe some of this isn't just the symbiotes doing but maybe because it's uh, now that it's been touched by Null in some way that um, it's unraveling in some way. So it could, these things could actually be happening or maybe they, they're not happening. We, you know, we don't really know yet. So I was going back and rereading those and, and trying to see if I could find a clue uh, since I was like, all right, a Bond's drawn this one and he, he drew the earlier story with the maker um, and they're talking about someone from Eddie's past because the vi you know, virus shows up and says, I, you know, you, uh, yeah, yeah, I met you before. He's like, you ruined my life. And Eddie's like, wait, what? And then just as he was about to, Virus about to tell him who he was, uh, you know, there's an explosion. And you see Virus shows up. He has all this tech uh, from different enemies from different places. I saw some people now saying that maybe this is Jack-O-Lantern uh, from the War of the Realm storyline or the one from issue one that got his head smashed in. So let the, you know, the guessing begin for, for Virus. So before people were saying it's Lee Price and Anne Wang, and I was thinking it was Ultimate Eddie Brock. All of us were all over the place, but I think it's actually something a little different than that. I think it might actually be uh, someone more close to Eddie's past and maybe the reason the suit knows who it is and Eddie doesn't is because maybe that memory was wiped from Eddie. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe Virus could be related to that kid who got hit by a car, um, you know, that Eddie killed, you know, because they, they, they mentioned that that kid had a mother and then later in the Abyss storyline they mentioned that kid had a family. And so I'm like, all right, well, maybe he had a, a, a dad, you know, or maybe he had a brother or a sister and maybe that's who Virus is.
someone who their life was ruined by Eddie because their kid was killed or their brother was killed or, you know, whatever. And I was like, that could be something interesting too, or it could be jack-o'-lantern. And some people said that, and I thought that was interesting. So I would say those are probably my two guesses now. I think I've moved away from ultimate uh, Eddie Brock, and I'm kind of guessing it might be either the someone related to the kid that Eddie killed, um, or it might be, because, you know, I was trying to think, I'm like, why tell that story? Why make that a point in the story if you're not going to come back to it? And I feel like maybe this Venom Beyond story is coming back to it. And there's also a reason the story is called Venom Beyond. As you know from Batman Beyond, uh, Batman Beyond takes place in the future, right? So uh, so in this storyline, there is something that happens with the Maker's Machine where the Maker goes one way and Eddie and Dylan go somewhere else. Uh, and they go to a place where it uh, looks like it's been taken over by Null in some way, or at least the symbol of Null, and, uh, and the Maker goes back home. So where this story is going to go from here, I have no idea. I'm very excited. I, I actually was like wow this was a pretty decent issue and I, although I have some critiques of some of the dialogue moments overall I still think this was paced pretty well the art was great uh, I thought it was a good setup and I think Donnie's really good at that if you look at issue number one of Venom I love that story when we got to Project Oversight the two-part story I liked that you know I feel like Donnie I like in short bursts Absolute Carnage number one loved it Absolute Carnage number five hated it. <laughs> so I feel like he's really great at setting stuff up. And I just, you know, hope he sticks more the landing. Venom Island was the same way. It started off great, ended very badly. Absolute Carnage, same way. Um, and although Abyss started off good, I didn't like the ending because of the retconning of the memories, but it was still a decent story overall. So I'm curious, what do you guys think? You know, have you read Venom number 26? I thought it was a neat issue. Um, I gotta say, I'm glad I took the gamble on it. Uh, so when I go to my local comic store here, I actually, uh, you know, you get points for buying stuff and I had to buy my brother something and it was like 40 bucks and that gave me a bunch of punches on my punch card and it filled it up. So they were like, hey, now you have $15 in credit. So I was like, oh, okay. So I grabbed a couple comics and then they were like, oh, you can fit one more in here. So I was like, uh, or one more will get you another punch on your new card. And I was like, cool. So I went and grabbed Venom number 26 and I was like, all right, let's check it out since it's basically a free book anyway. So uh, yeah, it was, I'm glad I read it though. I would have paid four bucks for it knowing, uh, you know, that it was actually a pretty decent story. So let me know what you think. If you've read Venom number 26, uh, Venom Beyond number one, and what do you think of me being positive? <laughs> I mean, I've been positive on Donnie stuff before. Like I said, I'm, I'm fair. I try to be fair and I'm, you know, being fair based off my opinion. People may disagree. You know, some people may like hate this issue and then, you know, and some people may, agree, you know, love it more than me. Like, I just thought it was good. I was like, hey, this is a solid issue. And, um, and it makes me intrigued. This is the stuff I like. It's Eddie Brock, street level, father, son storyline but then getting mixed up with the maker, which adds a level of cosmicness to it. And then there's some mystery with who virus is. I think that's a really nice formula for a story for Venom, and it's working out pretty well for the first issue. So uh, if you guys agree with me, disagree with me, if you've read it or not, let me know down below. What do you think? And tell me, who is your guest for, for a virus? You know, do you think it's Lee Price? Do you think it's Ann Wang? Do you think it's Flash Thompson? I heard people, some people say that. Do you think it's Jack-o'-lantern? Do you think it's someone related to the kid who got hit by the car? Like, we have so many guesses now, uh, you know, and I'm glad I went back and reread Abyss and it kind of helped me uh, get into this uh, a little bit more. And so that's a testament to Donnie's writing, you know, making me go back and reread something and re-explore it so that, you know, I see other little things in this story. And it's it's great, you know, so, uh, so I know I have my episodes where I am very critical of the guy, but this is one of those episodes where I'm very positive of the guy, you know, I thought this was a solid issue. So let me know if you agree or disagree down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys in the future. Peace.